at 7.30 because we have to bring in our good friend, Miss Cheap, who joins us now. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Just great. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. I love when I clicked on your article this week. Uh, we're going to get to the article in just a moment. But uh, our podcast we do last week was with Brad Willis, who is the executive director of the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. And your story this week, we did not talk about this, is about going to the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. And I thought it was fantastic. So thank you. Well, it was. it's a great deal right now since it's free. I mean, it's just it's a lot of fun and admission completely free if you're looking for something to do downtown. Yeah, I'm going to put the article up right there, and uh, it's free through the end of March, if that's correct, what Brad was telling exactly. us. Exactly. There's there's so much to see in there, Miss Cheap. When you get in there, uh, I spent probably, and the intern and I went, we spent probably 45 minutes just in probably the – 10 15 percent of the hall because there's so much to see in there well you know brad told me that that when that when people come at some people that you can just walk through in 10 minutes if you you know if you're not interested but that some people say two or three hours and you know you could easily do that when you when you think about the the there's a whole pet summit gallery uh that highlights her career uh as a as a player and as a coach and then there's sort of a history of college football and there's there's every sport imaginable is represented. I mean, I, I just couldn't believe the number of sports. They even have a, a tribute to one of the uh, wheelchair basketball players who was who was a champion. And you know, it, it's just very interesting. And I think they're adding to it all the time. So if you've been, that doesn't mean you don't need to go again. Absolutely. You know what's great about the Miss Chief is that two of the most important women in sports history are Tennesseans. We're talking about Pat Summit and Wilma Rudolph. And you can see all their history and their information and memorabilia from those two wonderful women in the Sports Hall of Fame that you're not going to see anyplace else. Right. And, you know, a lot of the a lot of the things for college football came from the Tennessee State Museum. Um, this museum has only been around this this Tennessee Hall of Fame, the Sports Hall of Fame and, and museum hasn't been around since except since 2000. And, you know, it's there's a lot of the collection that came from other places, but it's, it's all pulled together there. And as I said, they're adding things to it all the time. They're, they have 12 induct 10 to 12 inductees every year. And they, you know, bring in items that that represent them. So they've already they've already announced for this year that Javon Curse was going to be one of the inductees, and there'll be nine or ten or eleven more uh, announced through the rest of the year. So that's something else to look forward to. Yeah, they just had Brad Willis, the director, went out and he got David Suddeth from Treveca. He honored him last Thursday night. So they'll continue getting their nine or ten people. They'll get in the Hall of Fame, and that's fantastic. What I tell people about that is like, well, I don't like sports, but if you like history. History, you'll like this anyway. That's what I tell people. Well, I think that's so true, and it's you know it's it's right there in the Bridgestone Arena, and it's so if you go to the Information Center, the Visitor Information Center there, it's, it's the entrance is, is right next to it. So I think that they have about sixty thousand people come into the into the museum throughout the year, paid and unpaid uh, visitors. So a lot of people are seeing it, but this is a great chance to see it for free. It's no, open it Tuesday, Tuesday through Saturdays. And so, and you've got the information there on, on the uh, left side of the column there uh, as you go down there. And you've harked on this before, Ms. Chief, about, you know, these museums that when they're free, go take full advantage of all these because the Tennessee State Museum over by uh, Farmer's Market, fantastic if you've not been. And, this and it's free all the time. I mean, it's yeah. always awesome. Yeah. Exactly. And the fact that a lot of people are like, oh, I need to get down there, never been. Uh, you need to go. It's always a good time to go down there and see this. And I like the fact that you really highlight these museums because they're this is our history, and especially the Tennessee State, since Tennessee State Museum. Uh, there's so much to see there. You block a whole day off for that. I think so, too. I, sh I think I'll do a column on that on, on 10, thing 10 reasons why you have to go see the Tennessee State Museum. So be stay tuned for that one. <laughs> Will you put my name in the column? Yeah, I'll like yeah absolutely. Maybe we can go together. <laughs> it's a date. I love it. All right. So I know, we'll talk about that again, this column here. But I want to bring up what you've done for, and I'll pull the column up here right now, for Second Harvest, Miss Cheap, because God bless you. This is, let me see if I get it here correctly. There we go. Uh, your penny drive, and I'm going to read this correctly, raised $656,000 for Second Harvest. Yeah, it's amazing, but it's not, it's not me, Joe. It's people. It's, this is a true group effort. I mean, it's just so much fun to find to see that you have um, you have big donors, and then you have little children who are collecting pennies and putting them in there. So it's it's a it's a group a group effort where we can, you know, where we can 
all pull together and help these people. I mean, they, they say that one out of seven, one out of eight people in Middle Tennessee is at risk of hunger. Um, and that means they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Uh, you know, and, and when, when I heard that, and that this is the 13th year for this drive, uh, so it's, it's been going a long time and a lot of people are regulars in terms of, of contributing and, and collecting. But it's, it's one of those things that when you say that one in seven people is at risk of hunger, um, somebody told me, they said, well, that means that there's six of us that can do something about it. And so that's what we're talking about here is that every penny does count. And I think that's what's fun. I mean, like here you see the, the Girl Scouts from the Brentwood Brownie Scout troop. And, you know, I don't know how much they collected. In fact, we're, we're going to get their collection probably this week. But you know, they, they're they learning about giving and they're learning about need and they're learning about how they can make a difference. And that to me is, is a big part of this. It's not just about the money. Well, I'm going to, since uh, I'm the host of the show, I'm going to say you're massively responsible for this, Ms. Chief. You don't have to do this <laughs> because of you getting the word out there. And I know a lot of people helped out and everything, but because of you, you're the one that got this going. And to help 2.6 million people get fed because of this I just I don't know what else to say but simply thank you for all of us who live in Middle Tennessee well you know a lot of it Joe really the credit should go to Main Street Media because when I left the Tennessean the Tennessean had been such a wonderful sponsor and supporter of the Penny Drive all the years I was there um, but w when I when I left the Tennessean last year I, I really thought that we wouldn't be able to do a Penny Drive but Main Street the leadership at the, at the newspapers I just stepped right up and wanted to be part of this and so that's been so important to me to have that support and encouragement. And it's just things like Tuba Christmas. You know, we talked about that back before Christmas. And after Tuba Christmas, we had several of us collected money for Second Harvest for the Penny Drive from the from the uh, attendees at that con that free concert. And I mean, you know, within a, within 30 minutes after the concert, we had three thousand dollars. I mean, people are so generous, and I think people want to help. And this is just one way we can open the door so that people can help. So I'm really proud of it. But but it, it is, it's not just me, believe me, it's, it's a lot of people. And Wilson Bank and Trust and uh, Pinnacle Bank have just been wonderful co-sponsors. Uh, Channel News Channel 5 has been a sponsor. And, you know, all of that really has helped to get the word out and to make the thing work seamlessly to collect the money and to have it come back into Second Harvest. But Second Harvest is, is definitely worth supporting, I have to say. Well, I, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm, I'm not a firm believer that everybody needs everything in life, but I do believe that people deserve to eat. I'm very well, adamant about that people. Me too. Me too. To but regardless. you know, one of, one of the things people don't realize about Second Harvest is that it supports 46, it supports almost 500 agencies in 46 Middle Tennessee counties. Wow. I think a lot of people think it's just a Nashville thing, but it's not. It's it's a wide, wide net that they have out there of food, food network. And, you know, when things happen like Waverly or, or the tornadoes uh, as far west as Real Foot Lake, I mean, the Second Harvest, that may, may not even be in their actual area, but they help. I mean, that's they're a food resource for innumerable agencies that um, can use their food to help people in need for other things too. So it's it's a it's a good agency to support. Who counts the pennies? Well, the banks do a lot of it. That's one of the reasons that they're they're so important. But they, we do have a counting machine out at out at Second Harvest that um, it seems to break down every year because we have so much change to go through it. But it's it, it, there is a counting machine, and people, you know, some people wrap the coins and all, and they don't want to want that. They have to be loose coins for them to really count to make it go toward the toward the goal. So it's it's great. I mean, a lot of companies like McNeely Piggott and Fox and and Bassberry and Sims have made it their 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 uh, outreach project for the holidays and so that's that's been great bga's middle school uh, did a huge drive uh, the episcopal school of nashville the bellmead child care center and you know seeing these kids get involved is so much fun that's been a, that's been the real highlight to me did you come up with the idea for the penny drive Yes, I did. I, um, I had written a column uh, about, I had read the statistic that if, if you saw a penny on the ground, would you pick it up? And 42% of the people said they would not. And so I just wrote this column saying that I thought I would collect all those unwanted pennies and give them to some good agency. And that that's what really started it. And, you know, it's, it's just been such a fun project for me uh, all these years. And, you know, the, the this year uh, and last year, 
this a wonderful, generous man, uh, Bill Yeaman, uh, dipped into his foundation and made a huge donation, which really put us over the top. So it is big checks like that, as well as these little jars of pennies that people like these Girl Scouts uh, come up with. When you see that, Ms. Cheap, in, in print, you know, when I saw it this morning, <laughs> I mean, it really took me back. I got to think you started creating this to see $650,000 raised. Uh, I, I got to, I would have, you were just like, like take a minute to process that or how does this affect you well you know i have to i have to review it every time i talk about it because it just i feel like i'm not saying the right number <laughs> because it's so big because you know when you add up the whole the whole uh, 13 years it's it's over two million dollars and it, you know that's just staggering to me that 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 came out of people not wanting their pennies but it's it's also come out of the generosity of our community and, and just the fact that people like people do want to do something and sometimes they just don't know what to do so this if this makes it easy for them to do it let's go with it and that's that's one of one of the one of the things I think about is opening a door perfect that you're exactly right thank you for that Miss Chief as always thank you the great to call on the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame free go see it at the end of March of course the penny drive keep doing it uh, you're an angel thank you and we'll see you next week thanks stay cheap except when you're given to the penny drive <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ms. Chief. You see her articles every Tuesday in the edition of the Main Street. And of course, you can catch her on our show at 730 on Tuesdays.